This is Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. And good morning. It is October the 2nd, Monday morning. I'm Ray Collins. Glad you're with us. John Scalzi is back from an eventful weekend, I imagine, out in the backyard picking up sticks and <laughs> hurting your back some more. Yeah, just basically trying to uh, clean up the garage over the weekend. Was that it? Yeah, slowly but surely. Good. Uh, looking at some uh, pleasant conditions, though, I mean, we had a pretty nice weekend, I guess. It was a little on the muggy side, perhaps, but uh, and some intermittent rain showers, but uh, certainly didn't get... Uh, Heavy driving rains on our coast. Not true on the other coast. Boy, they got some 10 inch rainfalls over there. And in fact, that'll probably be the case for the next several days. We've got some cloud cover sitting right over us now. And we've got a strong easterly wind. That easterly wind encouraging more showers over on the east coast. And eventually, it'll take some of those showers and bring them back in our direction. Our chance of rainfall today about 40%. Complete forecast in a few. All right, tracking first alert uh, traffic right now this Monday morning. A little build up there in the northbound lane of I-75 as you head toward State Road 64. Farther south, some slow, slowdowns there on 301 southbound as you get past uh, 17th Street and South County all clear at 501 on your Monday morning. Well, breaking news we're following from Las Vegas where a shooting near a casino on the strip ended with right now 20 dead and 100 injured, and those numbers are still changing by the moment. It happened near the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino during a country music festival. A hospital spokesman says they're taking care of, quote, several people with gunshot wounds. Police said on Twitter they arrested one suspect, and they don't believe there are any more shooters. Witnesses say it sounded like firecrackers going off. We'll update next half hour and throughout the day here on ABC7. Back in this area, it's been about a month now since a Newtown teen disappeared without a trace. The latest now on the citizen search from our Sammy Chido. Everybody say, Lord. Lord. Guide us. Guide us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's right. 14-year-old Jabez Span has been missing since September 4th, and with little evidence of Span's whereabouts, some community members decided to put together a search party through Facebook. We want to do our part as a community of Manatee and Sarasota County. Manasota come together and show some love to this family to let them know that we care. And it's not only her son, it's my son, it's the community son. Dozens from around the Sun Coast investigated a ditch that runs along Myrtle Street, searching for any kind of clue. Some came out with no connection directly to Jabez, while others knew him well. He was like actually one of my really, really good friends, and I don't want to lose another, one, another friend. So that's why I came back out here today to come find him. What do you mean another friend? Um, I've lost like several friends, like um, from shootouts and stuff like that. Charles Jackson, or CJ, has known Jabez since they were in the sixth grade. CJ is hopeful to find his friend alive, but this isn't his first time facing tragedy. With these boys being so young, they shouldn't have to pe keep going to their friends' funerals. The theme of the day was to not give up and keep on searching. And we just want to just scout out everything so we can find anything, even if it's some, some clothes, whatever it is. But we just want to just make sure we cover all the areas. I will never lose hope for Jabez. He's a, it's like an ongoing mystery with him. So that's why I figure he's alive right now. Reporting for ABC7, Sammy Chido, your Suncoast News. A developing story from Manatee County where smoke in a restaurant caused some fast evacuations on Cortez Road. EMS and several fire trucks rushed to the Cortez Shopping Center about 6 p.m. last evening. Dozens of customers rushed out of the Mexicali Border Cafe. The manager said everyone was cleared out in less than five minutes. No injuries. The cause of that smoke is still under investigation. Sarasota County Sheriff detect detectives rather, are trying to find out who this person is who held up a 7-Eleven on North Lockwood Ridge Road. The armed robber uh, hit the store about 7, uh, 6.30 a.m. Sunday morning. Witnesses say the person came in the store with a silver handgun and stole cash before driving off. He was last seen in a silver four-door sedan. There it is. If you recognize that man in the photos, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 366-TIPS. It is 5.05 right now. A federal judge has blocked a Florida abortion law. If passed, that law would have required people and groups that provide abortion abortion advice to register with the state and give women a detailed explanation of the procedure and alternatives. 
The judge blocked that law in light of a previous lawsuit. Opponents claim it would compel them to make statements they weren't qualified to make, especially since they don't provide abortions, but rather make referrals. Well, this should, uh, this should be the heart of the season for Florida's commercial, lo commercial lobster industry. But after Hurricane Irma, fishermen are right now scrambling. The storm destroyed many of the traps around the coastline. Commercial fishing of spiny lobster amounts to about $40 million annually, most of which is done off the Florida Keys, an area hit hardest by Hurricane Irma. Cortez Road in Manatee County is one of the most dangerous roads in our area, and now the state of Florida agrees. A recent study by Miami's Stein Law Group found a two-mile stretch of Cortez to be one of the top ten deadliest roads in the state. In 2015, there were 270 crashes on Cortez Road between 14th Street West and 75th Street West. More than half resulted in injuries, and four were fatal. Figures from the Sarasota Metropolitan Planning Organization show that three of those killed were either bicyclists or pedestrians. MPO's executive director says there may be less fatal crashes if everyone followed the rules of the road. Pedestrians should walk on the left facing traffic and bicyclists should ride on the right with traffic. Fair enough. Cortez Road in US 41 will be the focus of an upcoming traffic study by the Florida Department of Transportation. The Sun Coast is doing its part to help restock a local food bank after Hurricane Irma left the shelves bare. Manatee County Public's locations and the Food Bank of Manatee County teamed up with area businesses to help stuff the bus, getting shoppers to help donate enough to fill school buses full of supplies to help feed those in need. The past hurricane that hit Florida, we currently don't have any food at our food bank. So we're here today to collect donations and then to go inside and shop and to collect canned goods, boxed foods to put on the bus and send to the food bank. The goal for Sunday's drive, 125,000 pounds of food. No word how much they actually got. A Sarasota insurance agency with ties to Puerto Rico held a donations drive Sunday for victims of Hurricane Maria. Employees from Universal North America on Fruitville near Cattleman collected essential items to be sent to their hundreds of co-workers, families, and friends in San Juan. Universal has locations across the U.S. and one in Puerto Rico's capital city as well. The uh, response has been fantastic, and uh, we can't tell you how much we appreciate uh, the things that people are giving us and their caring and the prayers that they provided to uh, everybody that uh, has been impacted by this hurricane. You can donate supplies at the, public, at the parking lot of the building on Paramount Drive, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. today as well. Happening today, after being closed for several months, the Venice Museum and Archives reopens today. Heavy rainfall after a storm last August damaged the museum's air conditioning and also caused some damage to the roof as well. At the time, staff have been in the process of installing a new exhibit. Well, that exhibit is called Venice's Inhabitants, the Unique Cultural Heritage of the Land and the Gulf. It will finally debut today. Well, after years and years of talk and planning and preparation, the World Rowing Championships is now over. The competition wrapped up Sunday for uh, 900 athletes and 42,000 fans who came out to cheer on the teams from around the world. This was the first time the event's been held in the U.S. since 1993. And for the record, the U.S. finished with a four silver and two bronze. Not great, but not bad. Much more on the event's local impact later today on ABC7. Meantime, shoppers at the nearby mall had a surprise over the weekend. Some rowers greeted fans and posed for pictures as well. The Olympic rowing medalists came over from the World Rowing Championships. Also there, Scott Brown, one of the most decorated uh, Paralympic athletes who also has uh, rowed around the world. He spoke with us about how his accident changed his view on sports entirely. I mean, I literally didn't even watch sports on TV before my accident. I, I was no sports at all. It's funny because I didn't get on Facebook until after that. And uh, all, all these high school friends are like, you do what? <laughs> I'm as stunned as you are. Well, I actually trained for the 2015 World Championships at, at the same facility. It's, it's beautiful. It's great. I was a little concerned. It tends to be windy, but I think it's the time of year because the water has been perfect for us this, for the championships. Neat guy. Brown says he'd like to see uh, 
adaptive rowing grow throughout the area, throughout the state, throughout the world. He says the talent pool can grow both in the U.S. and around the world with awareness of this. For the first time since winning a national title, the Sarasota Skiaries were back on the water Sunday. They did their Star Wars, the Skequel on the bay. I love saying that. Behind Moat Marine, they performed for decades for hundreds of thousands of fans. They won a big honor last month up north. You can catch them each Sunday this month around 2 p.m. at uh, Ken Thompson Park behind Moat Marine. It's on my bucket list. I need to go watch those folks. That's a fun thing to watch. Fantastic. We were a little concerned on Friday that maybe showers would have marred their debut, yeah. but uh, you know everything worked out fine. Nice day Sunday after all. Yeah, it was actually. Uh, Saturday we had a little bit of showery activity around. We had some overnight showers on Sunday as well, but uh, all in all it was a uh, great, it great was. weekend. Yes, it Lovely. Was. Uh, in fact, today will be, eh, you know, so-so. We have, I think the big weather story is some very windy conditions over the next several days. We'll talk about that in a sec. All right, John also still had first alert traffic. And after getting swept by Irma, the Florida Keys are slowly reopening. And later in the hour, an update on the Las Vegas mass shooting. It's 5:11, and you're watching Good Morning Suncoast on ABC7. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Being the caregiver for someone you love is truly a blessing. But sometimes you can lose a part of yourself. To be your best, for them and for you, it's important to have time to be able to recharge your batteries. When you call Tidewell Hospice, they can give you a chance to do just that. And with the peace of mind of knowing your loved one is in the very best hands. Tidewell Hospice. It's more than you think. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Will you qualify for a medical-grade back brace? Call Back Brace America at 1-800-683-9262. First alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. I think our big weather story today is going to be the winds. They'll be out of the east almost consistently throughout the day east. And they will be breezy as well, even right now at this hour, a time when normally we have the, the calmer winds around. We have winds up of 10 even a little bit higher right along the immediate coast, 10 to 15 right along the immediate coast. And those winds out of the east are going to serve two functions. One,
They're going to pin our sea breeze very close to the coastline. And two, they'll transport a few of these fast-moving showers across the peninsula into our area and out into Gulf waters, but particularly right along the coastline where the sea breeze will meet that easterly wind a little bit later on in the afternoon. Our rain chance is good today, but the total amount of rainfall that we will see will be on the minimal side because these showers will be fast moving. Plus, you'll notice that the tendency is for these showers to kind of dissipate as they move inland toward the spine of the state. Well, that'll be true through the morning hours, and then as we head into the afternoon with maximum heating, one or two of them will make their way in, but we'll have some locally grown showers along that pinned sea breeze as well. Heavy rain continues to fall over on the other coast, though. I'm telling you what, they got a deluge over the weekend, as much as 10-inch uh, rainfalls in some parts, particularly to the south. We will continue to see that same sort of situation over the next couple of days as we have plenty of moisture across the region to support scattered showers. If you're traveling today, the big weather story will probably be in Minneapolis, St. Paul, a low pressure area there spinning around, moving a cold front through there, through Michigan later tonight. That cold front will produce a chance of some pretty good showers and thunderstorms as well. As far as the chance for severe weather goes, it really is along that cold front. That's where everything will be kind of focused and oriented. A marginal risk of those showers and thunderstorms stretching from Minneapolis-St. Paul, really all the way to the top hat of Texas. Otherwise, for our area, we have just a standard chance of your average, everyday showers and thunderstorms. Although, really, I think the biggest chance is going to be for showery activity today. And that's because of that strong easterly wind just really pushing those showers straight across. You have a stalled frontal boundary in the process of decay across our region, a big high pressure ridge to the north. The combination of that really tightening our pressure gradient and giving us that strong easterly wind. And over the next several days, we'll continue to see that east wind such that we'll have a small craft advisory that will be issued later today, and that'll continue right on through Thursday. That's how breezy these winds will be. So rain chances increasing, still warm, and then breezy conditions will continue. Showers across the region. We have a little bit of rain falling now over on the other coast. As I mentioned, the best chance of rainfall will be in the later half of the day. East wind at about 20 knots, so watch for that small craft advisory to be hoisted today and stay with us for several days in a row. 40% chance of rain for several days, then we'll taper it off slightly midweek. And we'll up those rain chances again by the end of the work week. Back to you, Ray. All right, thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic now on this Monday morning. Pretty quiet so far up in Manatee County. No problems there. Farther south into Sarasota County. Nothing to report at this hour. And then the final look at the maps down south. Nothing. A clean sweep at 518 on your Monday morning. Well, tourists are now welcome in parts of the Florida Keys for the first time since Hurricane Irma struck the islands last month. Madeline Wright has the latest. The Keys are back open for business, with visitors allowed back into the Florida Keys for the first time since Hurricane Irma made landfall three weeks ago. We've made enough progress where the infrastructure is ready to accept visitors. Encouraging signs of normalcy down in Key West, with tourists enjoying boat charters, visiting the six-toed cats at the famous Hemingway House, enjoying the casual restaurants. This, as damage continues to be repaired, a fresh base coat applied to the iconic southernmost point marker in Key West. By welcoming visitors to the destination, it'll provide the jobs and the hope that our residents are looking for so they can begin to rebuild their lives. The hurricane decimated 20% of Monroe County homes. That means 10,000 homes there deemed unlivable. While many residents are still living in FEMA trailers, tourism is a major driver for the economy. Together, we picked up the pieces. An ad campaign is now running, encouraging a theme of unity after Irma and for tourists to come to the Keys. Helping in the recovery and being part of that process. Workers we spoke to in Key Largo say they have mixed feelings about letting visitors back in. While some say it's too soon, others say it's an important step forward. You drive down people's neighborhoods, they get upset when you got cameras and you're taking pictures and videos because you're, you're looking right into their heart. It's good for the economy and everything. To Keep the, keep the restaurants going and stuff like that. Gotta love the Florida Keys. Old Florida charm down there. 519 right now, still ahead. Facebook testing a way to regain access by using your face to verify your identity. And next half hour, our top story, the latest 
on the overnight shooting that killed at least 20 and injured at least 100 others in Las Vegas. A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a vow that captured Iwo Jima, a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earn. For help, visit DAV.org. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Invest in Kids is a $7.5 million project to build a new Boys and Girls Club in South Manatee County. I'm Caleb Grimes, and I was a club kid. It's where I learned important life lessons, leadership, integrity, responsibility, and baseball. Thousands of kids attend the Boys and Girls Clubs, and after years of use, their club is slowly falling apart. Help us invest in kids. Make your donation today. Thank you. And as you awaken on this Monday, here's a picture from a nice concert we had on a Saturday afternoon, evening. The rain stayed away. It looked dicey at times. I had a chance to host the event. This was taken actually from the stage. Uh, that's the crowd there at the Van Wezel looking out toward the bay. Uh, yesterday's was a great uh, group that performed. Also, we heard from the West Coast Black Theater Troupe. So, great day, a Bayfront concert there. Hope you had a chance to come out. If not, we'll see you next time. Send us your pictures from your events over the weekend right there. My address is facebook.com slash raycollinsabc7. I got plenty of fresh material for you to check out. Stop by and like the page. Also, Jacqueline's and John's as well. Welcome back. 522 right now on this Monday morning. An email phishing scam is targeting Netflix customers. ABC's Serena Marshall has the latest in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a warning for Netflix customers. Scammers are using phishing emails that look like they're coming from Netflix. Customers are told there's a billing error and then asked to update their payment details. Netflix says it never asks for personal information over email. Facebook is working facial recognition to recover your account. It's only available on devices where you've previously logged in. Facebook says if it's reliable, it could be rolled out to more users. And a Swiss company says it's a step closer to putting its passenger drones on the market. Its pilotless helicopter is a little larger than a small car and can carry up to two passengers for up to 20 miles. The company says the 16 electric rotors are independent, making failure unlikely. But just in case, it will have a parachute. Watch for it in 2019 with a price tag of at least $150,000. Ah, my poor mouth breather. Allergies, stuffy nose, can't sleep. Enough. Take that. A Breathe Right nasal strip, of course. Imagine, just put one on and pow, it instantly opens your nose. Up to 38% more than allergy medicine alone. So you can breathe and sleep. <laughs> Better than a cat nap. Shut your mouth and say goodnight, mouth breathers. Breathe Right. Harry's meeting clients from far away But they only see his wrinkles He's gotta play it cool to seal the deal Better find a way to smooth things over If only Harry used some bounce to dry Yeah, he would be less wrinkly and winning at life 
So many possibilities worth exploring. Minnesota flooring. Looking for carpet? Look no further. Minnesota Flooring has smart strand carpet as low as $1.79 per square foot. Installed, no add-ons or extras. Unbelievable? Minnesota Flooring can have in-stock carpet installed in your home in 48 hours for as low as $1.99 per square foot. Don't miss these prices. Visit Minnesota Flooring today. Let me introduce you to the ultimate Florida window. <laughs> Do you feel safer with this or this? You'll be proud too. Buy more, save more. Volume discounts on four or more windows. If you're over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days, I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. A free book to help you maximize your retirement income from television host and three-time author Josh Melberg has been released. This book reveals little-known truths about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we are about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known secrets we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. Call 800-307-2040 now and you'll receive a free copy of Josh Milberg's book, Next Gen Annuity Strategies Revealed. As a bonus, we'll also send you the number one mistakes retirees are making with their investments today and a free DVD on how you can get up to 33% more income in retirement. Call 800-307-2040 to have your free information kit rushed to your door. Again, that's 800-307-2040. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes, B, console her, Don't worry, sweetie. This is going to happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. That was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Start your day with a new Good Morning Suncoast team. Weekdays starting at 5 a.m. on ABC7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. This half hour on Good Morning Suncoast, terror on the Las Vegas Strip. We'll have the latest on a mass shooting overnight. Facebook goes to Capitol Hill to talk about some questionable ads. We'll have details. And the Bucks win in a close one over the Giants. We'll have the highlights, those stories and more right now on Good Morning Suncoast. Live from the ABC7 studios, this is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. And good morning, 529. It is Monday. I'm Ray Collins. We'll be joined by Stephanie Roberts at the top of the hour and all week. John Scalzi now joins us from the Weather Center. And John, we were at that concert on Saturday, and uh, it looked dicey. A few raindrops for a while, umbrellas at the, at the ready, but it never really opened up and rained on Saturday afternoon, at least. That's because there's sunshine following you everywhere, Ray. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. We have uh, some showers around during the weekend period, but nothing like the heavier rainfall they've seen over on the other coast. They have gotten some very serious rainfalls, as much as 10 inches of rainfall there, and it's ongoing this morning. Cloud cover across that coast shows anywhere from uh, really the Kennedy Space Center all the way down to Miami in the thick of it all. We have a chance at seeing some additional clouds around today as well, plus a fast-moving shower or two riding on a very breezy east wind. That easterly wind will be with with us for several days, it looks like, and with the amount of moisture that we have in our atmosphere, I think fast moving showers will be the name of the game. Low hanging, fast moving clouds and some fast moving showers as well. A rain chance at about 40% today. Complete forecast in a minute, Ray. All right, talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic now, some congestion on 301 northbound as the day begins. Also, State Road 70. 
Farther south now into Sarasota, a little build up there, 41 northbound as you head toward Bee Ridge, nothing too much to speak of. And then for South County, mostly clear at 5.30 on your Monday morning. We start with breaking news from Las Vegas where gunshots broke out overnight during a country music concert on the Las Vegas Strip. At last count, 20 dead, 100 injured. ABC's Dania Backus has the latest. A gunman opened fire Sunday night near the Mandalay Bay Casino Hotel in Las Vegas, sending people fleeing as police and SWAT units searched for the shooter. Witnesses reported hearing hundreds of shots fired, and there are multiple ambulances flooding into the area to help victims. My buddy's like, I just got hit, you know, and uh, got hit three times, and then people started diving for the ground, and it just continued, and it was pretty much chaotic. The shooting happened at the Route 91 Harvest Country Music Festival during Jason Aldean's performance. We refused to believe it was a shooting um, until it just kept going and going, and then Jason Aldean left the stage, and then everybody started fleeing. Mandalay Bay, as well as the Luxor, the Delano, the Excalibur, and the Tropicana were all evacuated, and four miles of highway has been shut down. Some of the people evacuated from the area could be seen on the tarmac at nearby McCarran International Airport. According to police scanner traffic, several SWAT teams were sent to the hotel, and officers reported being pinned down by gunfire. Police reported clearing out the Mandalay Bay's 29th floor and working their way up to the 32nd. A spokesman for University Medical Center said the hospital has taken in several people with gunshot wounds. There is a general sense of panic here in Las Vegas with the constant sound of police sirens and helicopters flying overhead. Many people have been seen rushing back to their hotels and many hotels along the strip telling their guests it is not safe to leave. Donya Backus, ABC News, Las Vegas. A Navy jet carrying explosives crashed in Tennessee this weekend. The Navy confirmed that a T-45 training jet was flying in the area overnight and that they have not returned yet to the station. Two pilots, an instructor and a student were on board. Their status is currently unknown. In the meantime, civilians were moved away from the area due to the aircraft's explosive payload. President Trump sent nearly 20 tweets this weekend on Puerto Rico, many of them defensive of the national response and some critical of the local leadership in San Juan. ABC's Serena Marshall has the latest. Back at the White House, President Trump responding to the crisis in Puerto Rico. We're getting a lot of things done, really at a record clip, so we're very happy with that, and I'll be going there on Tuesday. He spent his Sunday watching the President's Cup golf tournament from the 14th green but not forgetting those suffering from the storm. We're going to dedicate this trophy to all of those people that went through so much. The president's disaster management, including tweets. We've done a great job with the almost impossible situation, he tweeted. In another one, accusing the San Juan mayor of poor leadership, writing, they want everything to be done for them when it should be a community effort. As of Saturday, 45% of the island still without drinking water. The capital's mayor responding to the president's ire. There's only one goal, and it's saving lives. Just 25 miles outside of San Juan, politics and the president couldn't be further from their mind. Nobody's come to help. The Reyes family telling ABC's Alex Perez they still have no power, no cell service, many homes with no roofs. In the small town of Yunkos, tears as FEMA arrived. Not enough. It's not fast enough. They know that. We know that. And as the military arrives, the lieutenant in charge agreeing. We are not satisfied with what we've been able to do so far. These people deserve more help and we're going to bring it. President Trump heads to the island on Tuesday, and the mayor of San Juan tells us she has not yet been invited to meet with the president, but absolutely would if the invitation comes. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. The U.S. Coast Guard delivered plenty of supplies to people in Puerto Rico. This is the crew of the U.S. Coast Guard that packed supplies onto a 225-foot ship docked at Fort Macon, North Carolina. It's one of the uh, less glorious missions of the Coast Guard, but one of the more tangible. At the end of the day, we can uh, visually see the work that we did. But, uh, but this humanitarian mission has touched us on a whole other level. We, every crew member that got to speak with some of the locals yesterday when we pulled into the pier were just left with um, a sense of uh, thanks and um, accomplishment. 
The supplies included both food and water. Happening today, the suspected ringleader in the attack on the U.S. Embassy in Benghazi goes to trial. The suspect will face murder and other charges at a federal court in Washington. Prosecutors say he led militants to attack the U.S. compound five years ago. That attack left four Americans dead, including the ambassador, Christopher Stevens. The Justice Department, though, said they would not seek the death penalty against this suspect. U.S. Coast Guard delivering thousands of supplies to Puerto Rico. We've done that story already, so we'll move on right now and talk about new developments of a scary moment for Air France flight over the weekend. A passenger on board an Air France flight says the plane suddenly felt like it crashed into a car at 35,000 feet. The plane was headed to L.A. from France when one of the engines blew over the Atlantic Ocean. Thankfully, the flight crew managed to calm everyone down and nobody was injured. In uh, Spain, clashes between demonstrators and police left more than 800 in need of medical assistance. This as the people of Catalonia took to the polling stations to vote in a disputed independence referendum. Spanish national police raided polling stations and fired rubber bullets in an attempt to deny the vote legitimacy. The results from the election showed over 90 percent support for independence. That despite those results, the Spanish government has called the referendum illegitimate and illegal. Thousands were evacuated from an island in the South Pacific on Sunday as a volcano on the island began to spew smoke. More than 6,000 people have already been moved to emergency shelters on the South Pacific Island. The island is on the geographically active Pacific Ring, and it's a, a major tourist attraction in the meantime. Over 100,000 people continue to wait after the uh, mount, after the volcano in the tourist area has been its highest level of alert for about one week. All right, 537 right now. The trial for the murder of Kim Jong-un's half-brother begins today, finally. Nick Robertson has that story. Caught on security camera, a brazen daylight murder in public. Two women sneak up behind a man at Kuala Lumpur International Airport, one of Asia's busiest transport hubs, and wipe a cloth in his face. The man asks airport staff for help, but minutes later, he's dead. The victim, Kim Jong-nam, the estranged and exiled half-brother of North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-un. Investigators concluded the substance that killed him was VX nerve agent, a chemical weapon. Kim's murder drew international attention and sparked a diplomatic row between Malaysia and North Korea. Within days, police arrested two women. Dong Thi Huang from Vietnam and Indonesian Siti Aisha. But South Korean intelligence and later Malaysian officials pointed the finger to Kim Jong-un for ordering a hit on his half-brother. South Korea's intelligence service believes the women were recruited by two assassination groups. The women say they were duped and thought they'd been hired to take part in a TV prank show. But Malaysia's prosecutors allege they were well aware of what they were actually doing. One key question, though, is why North Korea may have wanted Kim Jong-nam dead. Theories range from the regime's desire to send a warning to North Korean defectors to stay silent, to Kim Jong-un feeling threatened that his half-brother may be a challenge to his rule and line of succession. North Korea strenuously denies any involvement in the murder. Malaysian police named several North Korean citizens they want to question about the case. Four of them left the country the day after Kim's murder. The others were sent back to Pyongyang after questioning. That leaves Duan Ti Hong and Siti Aisha as the only people charged in this most high-profile murder mystery. If found guilty of murder, both women face death by hanging. On Capitol Hill, Facebook expected to provide Congress more than 3,000 ads that ran on the website. Intelligence communities want the ads for their possible influence in the U.S. election. Many of the ads operated out of Russia and pushed divisive social and political issues during the U.S. presidential election. The company said it found 450 accounts and about $100,000 was spent on ads 
Facebook's CEO Mark Zuckerberg also announced that the company would not only provide the ads to Congress, but also make changes to ensure the political ads on its platform are more transparent going forward. On to sports now. Two Florida college teams stayed put in the AP poll this past weekend. The Gators are still 21st after picking up their third conference win against Vanderbilt. And USF stays ahead of them at 18 after an explosive win over East Carolina. Other teams now, Florida State outside the top 25. University of Central Florida moves in to that final spot instead. And Miami moves up one after beating Duke. Well, what a game this was, a thriller at Ray J. The Giants had taken the lead on a two-yard touchdown pass from Eli Manning to tight end Rhett Ellison with 316 left. But a penalty on Odell Beckham Jr. negated a two-point conversion try, which put the Bucks in position to, position to win. And guess what? The Bucks drove. 59 yards in 10 plays for this 34-yard game winner by Nick Folk. He hit it as time expired, and the Bucks won by two, 25-23. They now improve to two and one. That was a nail biter. Well, for the fourth straight year, the Rays will not make the playoffs. For the record, they did finish strong, though. They won their last four games and swept the Orioles on Sunday. Oh well. The uh, starting pitcher Blake Snell ends his season on a high note. 5-1 in his last 10 starts and a career-high 13 strikeouts at the Trop. Here's the Rays manager, Kevin Cash. Yes, there were frustrations throughout the year, uh, and we're not where we wanted to, to be, but uh, proud of the way the guys finished up and the way they carried themselves the bulk of the year. Seeing Blake Snell finish the way he did was, uh, was awesome. Um, you know, we're going to have pitching again. Um, you know, yeah, like you said, there's no... Uh, there's no victory when you're going home, you know, at the, on the last day of the year. I've always thought that we're a playoff team and we're good enough to do it. Uh, sucks that we couldn't put it together, but uh, the team that we have is really solid and sound. And I feel going into the offseason, we should, we're going to be hungry and ready to do something with that team. Let's hope the Rays finish this one 80 and 82, which is actually a 12 game improvement over last season. But to many fans that feared that once Joe Madden left the fold, that things might go downhill. He went on to win the World Series with Chicago, and the Rays continued to tread water in place. It's always next year. <laughs> always next year. Optimistic. That's right. That's right. We have uh, some kind of unsettled weather over the next several days, though, and if you're a boater, you're not going to like the forecast much. We'll talk about it in a sec. Also, first alert traffic, as well as a look at how conventional dieting methods might be coming out of date. Up next in Health Smart. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. This is an important medical announcement. Talcum powder products from some of the best-known brands have been linked to ovarian cancer. Any woman who has used a talcum powder product and has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that women with long-term use of talcum powder, including baby powder for feminine hygiene, can increase the risk of contracting ovarian cancer. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to women who should have been warned about the risks of ovarian cancer with long-term use of talcum powder. Call the talcum powder hotline. If you or a loved one used talcum powder and were diagnosed or died from ovarian cancer, you must call now. Call 800-570-7599, 800-570-7599. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Are you getting the most out of your Medicare plan? Are you sure? Many people with Medicare are eligible for plans that include extra benefits in addition to those found in original Medicare. Benefits like dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll. The consultation is free with no obligation to enroll. In addition to hospital and medical coverage, 
At no extra cost, you could also get coverage for prescription drugs, dental, hearing, vision, and more. In many areas, plans with benefits are available with $0 copays for many services, $0 monthly premiums, or $0 deductibles. That's hospital, medical, prescription drug, dental coverage, and more included in one plan with premiums that may be as low as $0 a month. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll. The consultation is free and there's no obligation to enroll. Call 1-800-620-2254. That's 1-800-620-2254. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Now your ABC7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Temperatures generally in the mid-70s most everywhere, but the important thing I think are going to be the sustained winds over the next several days. They're going to be breezy, they're going to be out of the east, and they're going to be as much as 20 miles per hour as we head into the next few days. A small craft advisor will be issued later this afternoon, and that will stay up right through uh, probably till Thursday. Uh, winds generally right now inland and near the coast are between the mm, about the 8 to 10 mile per hour range, but right along the immediate coast, they're even higher than that. So uh, at a time of day that would normally be kind of quiet and, and calm winds, we're seeing some breezy winds already, so that will only increase. A few scattered showers trying to make their way across the coast across the state but you notice that about the time they hit the center part of the state the spine of the state they start to fall apart that easterly wind flow though encouraging these coastal showers along the east coast and in fact it's been a very wet couple of days over on the east coast with as much as 10 inch rainfalls for us not so much pretty Pretty light stuff anticipated for the morning hours. A little bit later in the afternoon, we might have some heavier rain showers, though, right along the sea breeze, which will be kept close to the coastline. Showers and thunderstorms from Minneapolis, St. Paul, down through the heartland. Those are all associated with a frontal boundary that's carving its way eastward, producing the marginal threat for severe weather there. For us and for others in the deep south, no such thing. We're looking at just quiet conditions, maybe in the thunderstorm around one or two. But nothing that's going to be heavy, nothing that's going to produce any severe weather for us today. Showers will be more likely than anything else, and fast-moving showers as well. Showers moving fast enough that I don't think it will aggravate any of the flooding conditions across our region. Stalled frontal boundary meandering across the center part of the state. High pressure to the north. The combination of the two providing us with a breezy east wind and fast-moving showers. We'll have several days of that before some drier air starts to work its way in. You can see the rainfall future cast showing some of those showers moving quickly across the state. And then as we head into Wednesday, you'll probably start to see some drying take place for some drier air back to the east. Watch what happens on the moisture available for rain graphic. You can see the uh, red here over the state of Florida, redder is wetter, gets replaced by a little bit more of the dry, less humid air aloft as we head into Thursday and Friday. And then we'll just get moist once again as we head into the weekend with good rain chances then. East wind coming in at about 20 knots today. So just remember that, boaters. It is going to be breezy out there. And the forecast calls for several 40% rain chance days, followed by a couple of 20% rain chance days, followed by a bump up once again as we head into the weekend of rain chances. Back to you, Ray. Thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic now. A little build up there on 301 as you approach downtown Brenton, otherwise pretty clear in Manatee County. Farther south now. Pretty clear. A couple of slowdowns on each of Fruitville and Bee Ridge and Clark. Nothing major, though, at this hour. South County all clear. 549 on your Monday morning. In this hour's Health Smart, we all know losing weight is all about burning more calories than you consume. We know that part, right? But conventional thinking about portion control might be outdated now. Kim Hutcherson has our story. Do you eat three square meals a day, or are you an all-day grazer? 
Researchers have said for decades that eating multiple mini-meals throughout the day puts your metabolism in high gear. A study of 2,700 adults published in 2015 identified the positive impacts of increased meal frequency. Researchers found that individuals who ate six or more meals a day consumed fewer calories, ate healthier, and had a lower body mass index than individuals who ate four or fewer meals a day. But other experts say counting meals might distract from the more important metric, counting calories. Dietitians say it's important to set a daily calorie limit, then divide that into equal meals throughout the day. For a 1,500-calorie-a-day diet, that's three 500-calorie meals or five 300-calorie meals. Ultimately, researchers agree that the impact meal frequency has on your weight is minimal. Taking time to plan ahead for meals is the best way to mitigate temptations. Don't let that small mid-morning snack become an early lunch. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutchison. So do I graze all day or eat three meals? The answer is yes, both. 551 right now up next are our top local news headlines. And look at this daring rescue on a cell phone tower in Charlotte. The story after this. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Let me introduce you to the ultimate Florida window. Do you feel safer with this or this? You'll be proud to buy more, save more volume discounts on four or more windows. If you're over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days, I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. A free book to help you maximize your retirement income from television host and three-time author Josh Melberg has been released. This book reveals little-known truths about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we are about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known secrets we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. Call 800-307-2040 now and and you'll receive a free copy of Josh Milberg's book, Next Gen Annuity Strategies Revealed. As a bonus, we'll also send you the number one mistakes retirees are making with their investments today and a free DVD on how you can get up to 33% more income in retirement. Call 800-307-2040 to have your free information kit rushed to your door. Again, that's 800-307-2040. You love your couch and want to protect it from spills, food, and scratching, shedding pets. Introducing Couch Coat, the reversible, washable quilted cover that protects your couch. Shield against spills, wow, stop stains, and dirty pet paws and sharp claws. Plus, it's reversible with two stylish colors. Guaranteed to fit any couch up to 92 inches or your money back. It even has covers to protect armrests. Machine washable too. My grandkids destroy everything but with couch coat my couch is always protected looking as good as it did the day I bought it get your couch coat for just $19.99 and it's reversible in brown and cream like two couch coats for the price of one order right now and you can double your offer get a second couch coat just pay a separate fee order right now call 1-800-943-0710 to get your couch coat call now or go to couchcoat.com so call 1-800-943-0710 that's 1-800-943-0710 call now watch your suncoast news at six on your streaming device for a chance to win a 50 dollars visa it's easy just watch weekdays at six for the word of the week then enter the word at mysuncoast.com for your shot at a 50 dollars visa we'll pick the winner each week good luck Welcome back. 554. Here are the top headlines making news this morning as you awaken on this Monday. The surge is on for this armed robber who held up a 7-Eleven on North Lockwood Ridge Road Sunday morning in Sarasota County. Smoke in a restaurant caused customers to rush out the door during dinner at the Mexicali restaurant. It happened on Cortez Road. No injuries and 
Still no cause for that smoke. And after years of planning, the World Rowing Championships are now over. 40,000 fans attended the eight days of racing at Nathan Benderson Park. And finally, firefighters in Charlotte, North Carolina, performed a high-angle rescue atop a cell phone tower. A worker up top suffered a medical issue and became unresponsive. His partner tried to bring him back down but also got stuck. Charlotte firefighters responded and scaled the tower. They used a harness to lower the unconscious patient to the ground. He was transported to a local hospital for treatment. Officials say the workers were atop the tower for about two hours. The rescue posed quite a challenge since the tower was much higher than the truck's ladders could go. An awful place for a, mm. a medical incident for that tower worker. Yeah, you're not kidding. Wow. Especially since the uh, ladders couldn't reach him. What, Gee, that's, what that's you, the what scary you, thing. Yeah. What do you do then when the ladders reach? I don't know how reach. they did that. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. I hope he's all right. We're looking at some uh, changing conditions over the next several days, I think. Uh, kind of breezy. That'll be the, one of the main things I think everybody yeah. will notice. It's just how windy it's going to get all around right. here. Thanks for the warning. More on yep. John's forecast and more on the tragedy in Las Vegas. That's our top story. After this, stay with us, please.